All right, folks, welcome back. We are looking at the euro dollar. Now, if you have not watched yesterday's video, that being June 21st, 2021, then this video isn't going to be as impactful as it would be if you had watched that video first. So don't watch this one yet if you haven't watched yesterday's. Now we're looking at the hourly chart here and all the framework that I gave you yesterday with the exception of this, which has my attention at this moment. We'll see if it wants to get up there or not, but I'm not convinced yet that it wants to, but it could. But the overall framework is here. So we have the daily fair value gap that we traded down into relative to what I mentioned on Sunday's video. And then all the framework that I outlined with during yesterday's video. And then we had mentioned this fair value gap, which was used in yesterday's price action. And I talked about how the market would likely go above this level here and this over here. Okay, so this buy side liquidity pool all up here was basically the draw on liquidity. We're looking for price to want to drive up into that. And while it wasn't necessarily needed yesterday to be profitable from trading in here and in a little bit higher level, it sent it higher. It still remained a catalyst for today's trading. Now, using the same information I teach, the fair value gap, they can be used again. They're not like one and done. There is no such thing as a fresh or stale, <laughs> and it's not a zone. So what we're looking at here is the underlying context of the market trading back down into this level again, and then repricing above to take the buy side liquidity out here. And obviously you can see there was a trade taken. So I'm going to show you something that would be useful going forward because I'm using the information and the ideas I taught you yesterday in the marketplace. Okay, so you can see a bread and butter setup. It's not me talking about what could have happened like I did yesterday when that's theory. That's important, but it's just theory. Understanding the theory and then going into the marketplace and then utilizing it, that is mastery. And that's what you're striving for. You're not watching a video thinking you understand exactly how to do it and going out and hurting yourself with a live account. You have to do these types of things I'm showing you here to get to this point. And then they grow into bigger trades and bigger opportunities and more frequent setups. Not that you need to be chasing frequency now. It gives you the aptitude to be able to do that eventually. Okay, so I want to go into the 15 minute time frame. All right, and this is basically what I was using today. And the market had opened up here. Let's put the daily divider here at midnight. So the market trading lower. Give a nice little optimal trade entry for London. Sold off, attacked the sell side liquidity in here. And then once it did that, it traded back up higher. Back down into what? Where do the bodies of these candles respect that old hourly fair value gap? You see that? Now, we're going to drop down into the New York session. Zoom in here. And when the bodies of these candles respected the fair value gap, and then we ran above the short-term high, I was focusing primarily on what I taught you yesterday, which is taking the fib. See this candle here and this candle here. That's all one order block. This opening price right there, that's where the change in the state of delivery occurred. It went from bearish to now bullish right there. So you anchor your fib right there on that opening price. Drag it up to the high, right in here. 
you can see how the market traded back down into optimal trade entry there. Look at the bodies respecting that 70.5 level. See that? Pretty random, huh? <laughs> now the tails, again, I teach you not to pay too much attention to that. Focus on the bodies. Now notice this candle right here. Is, that's the candle I was entering on. Now what I was doing was watching this candle opening price because as it traded down into the optimal trade entry, which is just basically giving me an oversold condition, trading back into the order block here. So I'm going to take the fib off because it's already accomplished its task here. This candle, as it was dropping back down, because it had already went above the opening price on this candle here, which is the order block. As it was trading above that opening price of this candle in this candle here, when it drops back down and touches that opening price, that's when I'm buying. I bought it right there. Now, if you look at the opening price on this candle, it's essentially 1.19046. Okay. So as the price hits that opening price again, I want to be buying there because I'm confident that we've already made the low for New York at that point right there after this run higher. Now, obviously, you know, we're looking at a low in New York down here, but I'm looking at the shift in the market structure above this short term high with this candle. I'm focusing primarily right there. That price is the change of state of delivery to bullish. I don't need to put my FIB down here like retail traders would. I'm framing the dealing range that the algorithm is going to be referring to. Again, this is not in other books. It's not in Wyckoff. It's not Chris Laurie stuff. Larry Williams has no idea what I'm doing here. <laughs> uh, Jesse Livermore. I have a guy now trying to tell me that Jesse Livermore was using order blocks. Listen, folks, this is stuff that I'm teaching for the first time, and I'm showing you applications of it. The change of state of delivery begins right there. So the dealing range low is this order block opening price to the high. It trades back down into the optimal trade entry, giving you a what? A short-term oversold condition. When I'm sitting down in front of the charts, I had already seen this candle started going up. So I missed this point of entry. No problem. Another level of order block theory is if you're in this down close candle and you're trading near the opening price you can be a buyer at that price point right there now the reason why i want to do that is because if it does run higher and it retraces back down in before taking this buy sell liquidity out i could add more there if i still like the trade or i could just basically refer to it as this is another level i would be buying at if i hadn't already went long in this candle as it touched that price because the belief is it's already done its work by going down here and if it trades back down inside the same candle just to touch that price while it's here then I know I'm confident that it's not likely to come back down to this low so I want to see it do that and then move higher the next candle drifts a little bit deeper into the candle and then a little bit deeper still to basically mean threshold now, I'm not in front of the chart as it's doing this. I'm off doing my own thing, but I'm letting the recording that you'll see in a couple minutes do its own thing. Now, I apologize because I thought I had maximized the screen. And while you do see the limit order sitting up towards the top of the screen, the price runs to it and a little bit past it, as you can see there. But obviously, you can see there's price points being used here and I'll hover over top of it and now you can see them that was my fill 119.06 and 2 and the limit order filled at 119.26 and 3 so when it's trading down into this level right in here what I'm doing is I'm trying to get a feel for whether or not it's offering a range of potential profitability that I like. Now, right away, you can see that this has moved 25 pips. So from here to here, that range is 25 pips. 
that would allow me to make 10 to 12 pips easily with the spread factored in both sides. But I'm going to use a limit order that's a little bit above here because I'm trying to get into but not actually at that 119.30 level. And you'll see in a couple minutes as to why I was choosing that when we go back to the hourly chart. But for now, just understand that that was the framework I'm using. I used a 10 pip stop loss, wasn't a whole lot, and I was trying to make 20 pips. So as a bread and butter setup, it's not going to be a smashing amount of pips. It's not trying to make a crazy R multiple. I'm not trying to compete with other people. I'm not trying to do a better trade than the next guy. All I'm trying to do is find consistency in finding my rent money, my Lambo payment, <laughs> my yacht payment, whatever you want to call it, okay? Whatever that motivating factor is for you while you're now developing, wonderful. Use that if you need it. But you still have to eat. You have to pay your bills. So when you first become consistently profitable, it isn't, okay, now I'm consistently profitable. Now I'm going to get rich. No, it's let me replace my job so that way I don't have to work for that money that I'm earning. And if I can double that income, I've made my job redundant. The process of saving money, two and a half years worth of living expenses, that's another threshold that you have to meet. And then, and only then, should you ever consider doing live full-time trading because you have two and a half years of capital to live on and not require, I have to have a trade today that's profitable. I have to have a profitable week. It removes all of that necessity and the psychological barrier that's going to plague you as a trader that's using live funds. Now, if we're looking at this on a bread and butter basis, it meets all the criteria because we're looking at a London session that made a low here. Then New York finds support at a discount array that I even talked about yesterday. Then it does what? It gives us a market structure shift above the short-term high. We have a buy side and balance sell side and efficiency. We have an order block, the last two down closed candles, and the change in the state of delivery, which is what I taught you yesterday. You lay your fib on that. You can get optimal trade entry and short-term oversold while in this buy side and balance sell side efficiency and trading back into the order block. Now, not requiring the best entry, which would have been me getting in on this candle here, using the logic of my order block theory, this candle here has already done the work, just like this one has done the work. So these two consecutive down close candles are the same thing this is. It's a bullish order block. I don't need it to become a order block after an engulfing candle, which is what everybody else is trying to take my stuff and say you have to have an engulfing candle for an order block. That's nonsense. They have no idea what they're talking about. They have no idea what really what an order block is, and they have no idea what the underlying narrative is, which is what makes an order block a valid order block, which is what I'm outlining here, the narrative. So I can be a buyer in this candle here, this green one, when it trades right back into that opening price. Once it's trading above it and comes back down into it, I don't need it to go all the way up here and then trade back to it at a later time. I don't need that because I understand what's already occurred down here and what's happening right now. Okay, so in this candle here, right at the tail end of the New York session, 8.30 to 11, remember that's the time window that the bulk of New York trading going into the London close kind of like finishes its course. But if you can get an entry point there, the London close becomes a trend following, which is what we have here. So we have the turn that took place early on in the morning. Then the confirmation that we're not going lower and we're seeing the support of that fair value gap with the bodies of the candles in here. And then we have the shift in market structure and then the retracement down in order block wick to opening price draw that out and you can see it's hitting that multiple times but i'm using the criteria that i gave you yesterday and you'll see that in the video and this buy sell liquidity has not been attacked yet which is what i mentioned yesterday in the video that i do believe that that's likely to be 
a draw on liquidity still. But we have to do what? We have to move to a discount. So when we're up here and it drops down to here, we are in a discount. It's giving you the signal right here. The algorithm is giving the flash, if you will, that, hey, I'm respecting this PD array. What PD array is it? It's the hourly fair value gap. What kind of PD array is it? It's a discount. That means it's likely to do what? Reprice to a premium array. Well, at this moment right here, where's the nearest premium array? This short-term high. Then this short-term high. Then here. And then you have all the buy side liquidity above here. So I'm going in with that premise in mind that we have now turned intraday. Remember, we're really oversold on the daily chart. Daily has been overbought on the dollar index. So it's all about liquidity on the opposite end of the range. In other words, everything's been going down. So what are they going to be attacking? Trail the buy stops on bear positions on euro. And here we have it. So I'm going to let you watch the video. And I'll touch base with you tomorrow in the midweek review. Until then, be safe.